Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aries. If Aries is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, and so our card tonight is the Six of Wands. That has everything to do with victory. And immediately, <laughs> I picked this up, and we have, it looks like a kangaroo. <laughs> with the tail and the head, uh, the arms, and the, the feet there. Um, a beautiful symbol, and actually pretty interesting, I was just watching a podcast where they were showing videos of kangaroos and how aggressive they can be. Um, but really for me, when I look at, when I see the, the kangaroo come through, it really is a strong motherly archetype. This is a marsupial and that means they have a pouch, right? And we know the little baby joeys is what they're called, the baby kangaroo. They live in that front pouch and, um, and so they dwell in, um, kind of, it's kind of a womb, right? For an extended amount of time. And so, um, I can't help but relate the symbol to the presence of a strong maternal energy. Now, this doesn't have to be exactly your mother. It doesn't have to be your grandmother. Um, it could be a caretaker. It could be a role model, um, an ancestor, some kind of elder in your community who kind of mentored you or looked out for you. This could be you, yourself. And so... Um, I really, I think that this is uh, something that is so important. It's something that's very central to your life. And at the moment, very much in your consciousness. You're thinking about this person. You're thinking about this path a lot, okay? Um, what is What it is to be um, somebody who gives everything to the ones that they love. Um, what it is to be um, a person that, you know, grows a human being um, and, and then, you know, walks, aside, walks beside them um, for as long as they can, right, um, to uh, help raise this child into the, the world, you know, to help them become, um, uh, and I want to say more conscious being, but it's not really that. I think maybe when we're born, we're at our peak consciousness, right? Um, the rest of our life is trying to get back to that. Uh, but, um, you know, but taking care, loving, nurturing, um, you know, all these ideals, right, we have of parenthood, um, of, uh, and let me just tell you, this maternal um, energy does not have to be tied to um, any gender, right, or any role exactly within the family unit, community. Uh, this is a consciousness, really, Okay, and so um, this is something that's super important. Uh, and it is um, something that very fiery. Oh, I mean, almost on the verge of brutal viciousness um, as far as protection goes. Um, would do anything for their child. Um, and... You know, I I feel like in these in these weeks, um, all these holidays, all these markers of time, we have the solstice coming up. We have my personal favorite holiday of the year, Saturnalia, <laughs> coming up in about four days from now, um, a little less now. Uh, you know, and all the other things 
all of the other holidays that that kind of line, the festivals, the feasts, the traditions, and so on, um, really bring families together, but also bring up a lot of memories, a lot of memories, a lot of um, you know sense of what we have lost, uh, what has you know kind of. Um, dissipated or rearranged the configuration of our families of people getting older, people growing up, um, you know, kids leaving the nest, going out, starting their own lives, and so on. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, we sit back for a moment. <laughs> if you get that little moment during these days and really look at the landscape of where you have been. Um, and you can't help but come back to this feeling of, of the mother, of the father, you know, of these, um, pillars of origin. And, um, I, I've been getting this image a lot in my head lately. And I talked about this, I, and I forget, I think it was maybe the Capricorn reading um, that I just said a few days ago, but there's just really the strong image of kind of a, uh, like a, like a tundra, a bleak landscape, you know, very monotone, um, vast, almost kind of empty looking, but then there, there is, um, some kind of tent or dwelling, you know, there, um, and, and when you open it up, inside is this bright fire, this furnace of life, um, this mother, this mother, the mother is that tent in this, you know, eternal night. <laughs> um, I saw something else the other day where they were talking about, um, and I'm trying to think where I saw it. I hate that I can't remember, but um, they were talking about how precious life is here. Oh, yes, it was uh, the show that my husband and I have been watching, um, and I think it's called uh, uh, Something at the End of the World. I can't say the first name. <laughs> I can't say the first word, um, but... Um, Yes, it's on Hulu. You can go find it. Uh, it it's really good, actually. Um, and they talk about uh, when you realize how precious life is um, against the backdrop of the internal night of the cosmos, how vast and empty, or how we perceive it anyhow, to be vast and empty, that even us, lowly, messy, um, you know, barely evolved little beings on this rock are so precious, you know, so precious. And we forget that we do, we forget that. And, um, in, in these, in these months where, you know, in the Northern hemisphere, it's colder, it's darker for longer. Um, you know, I think about these things and, and, you know, in the Southern hemisphere, if it is much like how it is in the summer here, um, you know, you're indoors more often and yeah, you do, you do think about your place on this earth, um, with all, with all that heat out there, <laughs> all of that, um, it's just, uh, it, it twists the brain a little bit, all of that heat, you know, closer to, a sense of becoming unraveled, you know, and, um, yeah. And it's hard not to think about our place in this infinite, which is unfathomable, you know? So, uh, let's see, what else do we have going on? Um, and I want to say as I, you know, I usually stop and try to mention if you haven't, uh, subscribed yet, please think about doing that. It is free. And when you, when you do subscribe, hit the little bell, it'll let you know, uh, when the next readings are coming out. Okay. 
Now, let's take a look. We have a large horse and somebody riding on the back of the horse. It's a, a stallion, really. And it actually looks like a, a couple, three people, three people, actually. Um, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, three people riding on this horse, okay? And there is. There is a sense of power, that victory energy. Um, and I feel like this really... I think about your life as, uh, you know, you've had these different sections. And they seem very different from one another. I think that you look back and you really... There's distinct... Um, kind of chapters, right? And so, um, you know, in each time, in each act, I don't want to say that you're in the third act, that would be towards the end, you know, <laughs> but maybe the first three chapters of the first act, right? You're still, you still got lots and lots of life to live. Um, there have been you know, big things, big things to overcome, big achievements, okay, things that you can really look and say, I did this, you know, maybe um, going to school, finishing school, having a family, you know, raising that family, um, your career, your, uh, you know, your passions, your awakening to the divine, um, your creativity, I mean, whatever it is, um, you know, and at these points, you can really look at each part of your life and think this was the thing that made it so sweet. This is the thing that fed that um, untamable, uh, you know, horse, <laughs> that beast inside of me. Um, it made me who I am. Um, you know, and, and when I begin to walk away from that feeling, when I get further and further out and life just wears me down, it grinds me, it grinds me, my knees feel weak and I have to kind of just sit down on the ground and I look up at the stars and I think, how did I get here? You know, where is this? Where is this energy? Where is this, um, you know, this uh, wild horse running through the valleys, you know, hair flowing? Um, how do I get back to that? Okay, and I look at this and I see, and I see a person here, right here, uh, and kind of on their knees, okay? We have a fish, and then we have this person who's in a devotional pose, you know? And I'm not going to say it's just prayer that gets you there. Um, but I do. I think that it is a sense of humbling, a sense of uh, letting go of expectation, okay? Succumbing to that... Uh, that influence of the universe, that divinity, that thing that, um, and it doesn't have to be religious. It doesn't have to be theist at all. Um, it doesn't have to follow any system or philosophy or it's just a feeling. It is a feeling. It is the simple feeling that we know something is alive, right? You know, when something is not alive, you know, when it is, you can look at, um, you know, a plant and know this plant, well, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell <laughs> for me anyways, it's hard to tell. Um, but you can look at something and think, yes, this is something that's dead. I instinctually know, um, and something that is, uh, you know, close to death, something that is completely full of life and, so I see, uh, you know, going into this place, just letting yourself let go of, you know, any kind of uh, need to qualify your your achievements, you know, that there is no need to, qu to quantify the life that you have lived. Um, but to, at times, anyhow, uh, Give yourself 
the the break i mean it's not even a break really um but to be small to be something that feels so meaningless to um really to to be humble on your knees underneath the stars you know um breaking wide open uh so that you can be alone with that divine thing and you know if it sounds if it sounds uh silly and new agey or you know whatever of me to say i think this is where we begin to find our abundance you know and um i i compare this to when i be when i went into recovery and i am in recovery and i do 12 step and they told us, you know, you have to, um, you have to surrender your, you know, basically your pride or that you're the, this feeling that you know better, you have to surrender yourself over to this higher power. You have to trust in this higher power. If this higher power led you to this thing. And so, you know, I think even I took issue with this, you know, higher power like there's a higher power what is this you know what are they trying to like get me involved with here um but you know over time it made more and more sense to me it doesn't matter what the higher power is that is um individual to each person okay and it doesn't have to be a fixed thing it can change you know it could be many things it could be one thing it could be barely you know anything at all um but it is in it is really in the release of control, of needing to control a situation. And we're bad at controlling anything because we can't. We live in, you know, the nature of things is chaos, right? And we lie to ourselves that we can control anything. So when we surrender, when we surrender ourselves to all of that, that ineffable thing, it's like stuff starts falling into place. We start seeing the ease of life. Right? Like that that leaf that's floating down the river on the water. It's not fighting. It's just kind of going for the ride. And up here, <laughs> my favorite symbol... Um, of this cup, it reminds me of uh, garlic chives or chives. And if you've ever seen chives come to flower, they're really beautiful. And they are a flower that blooms late, late in the summer um, into fall. And um, I love planting them, not only because they're delicious, the chives are, uh, but because so many um, bugs and bees and wasps and sweat bees and flies and you know whatever beetles and things they share a community there I mean there's just tons of them and you know as the as the flowers are starting to pass their prime then we get these late bloomers and they become you know prime real estate really and so uh, I look at this and I think there's a sense of, ah, I'm late. I'm late. I've already passed, you know, the time that I was supposed to do something with my life. What do I have to show for this? I've had these different chapters in my life. And yes, I've gotten to places where I felt like I was successful. And then what happened, it didn't work out or I changed my mind or you know, the circumstances of life shifted and, and so on and so on. And so there is a lament, but the, but the truth is, this is a lie. This is an illusion. You know, if you're, if you wake up in the morning or evening or whenever you wake up, if you open your eyes or, um, or, you know, come into consciousness, um, that is a success. That is a victory. And you will continue to bloom. 
he'll continue to bloom. Um, the story is not over. The, the victories are not over. It's time to work on perceptions. You know, you maybe are a little bit wound up in keeping up with those around you, keeping up with the story that we tell each other. This is when you know you're successful. This is when you know you've made it. This is when you know uh, you can rest a little bit. You've done it. It's never going to be good enough. Nothing's ever going to be good enough. So it's about changing the perception. And that's where you will find some peace. All right, let's take a look. We have a lot of emotional waters. <laughs> a lot of them over here. Uh, and we have some hearts. Okay. Uh, we have two hearts, actually, and we have a bird, and we have an 11, although it's moving around a little bit, but we have two perfect ones there, so we have 11. Um, okay, so, yeah, I feel like there's... There's a cautious love here. You know, there's a love that um, endures, but for whatever reason, one reason or another, there's a, there has been a need to feel a little bit cautious about it. And, um, and I feel like this is maybe somebody that you have been with, you have maybe had a relationship with it on and off, um, but they're one of your people that are always going to be one of your people. They'll always be in your life in some capacity. Um, and, you know, I think, I just look at this and I think, you know, you get into this, like, place where you're really questioning life stuff and what you've been doing with life and what life has dealt you and, and all these things. And then, oh, here's the next thing to add on to that. This person who maybe the the romantic or domestic or marriage or whatever, it didn't work out, but you're still friends, okay? Um, and, and that's bittersweet. But I, I challenge you to look at it in, in the light of how many people in life, you know, have no ongoing connection to somebody, you know, um, this it's a blessing to have somebody that you can navigate through um, sometimes treacherous, treacherous uh, dynamics, right? And get to a place where um, you do care about each other. And sometimes that just has to be enough, you know. Um, and then the message, I feel like there will be something very apparent for you coming up and I you know, and I, and I really feel that this is kind of uh, somebody um, in your life really letting you know um, that, like, hey, you got to, like, give yourself some, when, when I was young, we used to say, you have to give yourself some props. <laughs> um, but, no, you, it's, you have to give yourself a little bit of love, right? A lot of love. All the love. Um, you've done well. You've done well. You know? And um, I almost, I feel like it's a brother. Or uh, like a male cousin, maybe. Somebody who is uh, um, like a, a peer uh, around your age. Um, but I think that they're transitioned probably. Uh, and I'm seeing two. And I feel like you two were um, inseparable. You were inseparable. Um, so this, I think, is a heart, you know, a heartache. Definitely. Um, 
but they're there. They're there with you. And, and, you know, I must feel like this is a person that's like, you know, stop, stop whining. <laughs> Get it together. Everything is good. It's better than we ever imagined it was going to be, you know? Okay, so we have the Cincy Child Affirmation Cards, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip through. I'm going to stop where it feels right. We're going to flip this one over, and it says, I am committed to myself and fully surrender to my relationship with myself. There we go. We are just talking about surrender. I love it when they, like, highlight what we were talking about. Yes, 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 yes. I'm committed to myself and I am fully surrendered to my relationship with myself. Yes, I'm all about that. Thank you, Cincy Child Cards. Thank you, thank you. You heard what we were talking about. All right, so Aries, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much. And if you have not subscribed, please think about doing so. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment, please do. I read every single one of them. And they mean the world to me. They really do. So, Aries, I love you. We'll talk in a few days. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.